to send this guest um, on site and online, and all the panelists. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to this afternoon session. I am uh, Mabel Miao, Vice President and Secretary General of CCG. Uh, here, the topic for this session is China's non governmental think tanks in changing times, a new role. So, with great honor, we have the president of the frontiers and uh, also the practitioners from uh, non governmental think tanks in China. And right now, we have a 1.6 audience online for our streaming. Maybe there could be more from other uh, channels on our uh, interlink and uh, uh, Twitter uh, because they all pay close attention to uh, the development of the think tanks. And also, there are there is, um, experts and scholars paying for attention too. So again, welcome all of you. Now, a brief introduction to the panelists. So in alphabetic order, again, He Jin, Director of uh, Mac Research of Anbang. Professor Li Gang, Director of the Center for Chinese Think Tank Research and Assessment of Nanjing University, a well-experienced and a prominent, prominent uh, professor in this regard. The next one is Li Gang Chu, the Vice President of Tencent Research Institute. Okay, very honored to have two panelists named Li Gang. So here, very influential one too. And we have online panelist Angela Mao, head of community engagement at our Hong Kong Foundation. She's with us online. Actually, I remember last year, uh, she was here uh, on site. So good to see you. Hello, thank you for the kind introduction. Good afternoon. And of course, our president, Wang Huiyao. And also from uh, Pangol Institute, uh, founder and president, Yi Peng. And also from uh, Dataway Horizon, Chairman Yuan Yue. A very, very famous person, often on TV. And also, we have uh, Zhou Hucheng, Executive Deputy Secretary General of uh, Chahar Institute. So, for this panel, we're talking about non governmental think tanks uh, now facing this uh, changing world. So, whatever we see, like those black swans and the black uh, uh, rhinos. Uh, actually, whatever is changing as professionals in think tanks, we deeply know that we're living in this real and changing world, all challenging our existing uh, ideological system. Uh, but actually, I personally believe that everyone is very active, and actually, there are think tanks in China pursuing. A, a direction that is based on the uh, Chinese characteristics, and they have been and will continuously play an irreplaceable role in this world. Anyway, so for our panelists, each one of you will have a five to six minutes. So our topic today is how can we find our new role in this new era? Uh, we need innovations, we need capacity buildings, we need institutional buildings. So all things are important. But anyway, how can we maximize our advantages in this new era so that we can play that new role well? Uh, well, now the U.S. President-elect Joe Biden will soon take play, uh, office. So for uh, governments and businesses, and non-governmental think tanks. How can we bridge government and businesses for better cooperation? We have heard some wonderful presentations and views in this morning, and we really need to bridge the divide or shorten the divides, and we need to rebuild mutual trust and what kind of role non-governmental think tanks should play in that regard. 
And we're blessed that we heard a wonderful idea this morning. But in the afternoon, we will continue that momentum to hear more ideas. Okay, now in this uh, list order, I uh, would say. Okay, Professor Li Gang. Because uh, the rest of us are all the uh, practitioners in uh, think tanks. And uh, Professor Li Gang from Nanjing University is from a uh, university. So you go first. Thank you very much. In this morning, a wonderful session. That, uh, there was a path, no, uh, at last, uh, running out of time. So we didn't have a chance to hear some details. But now we know that there are millions of audience online waiting for us. So I will try to make sure that we can maximize this opportunity. Well, very, very pleased and honored to be here. I personally believe that non-governmental think tanks uh, have been developing very fast in China, but on one prerequisite, which is both the governments and the general public uh, have the concerns about the existing uh, issues or the development. So for non-governmental think tanks, it is important for them to win the trust from the government and the general public. Otherwise, they cannot really play their role. But how to build that trust? It is quite challenging. Uh, they need to, first of all, work uh, the same way international uh, think tanks do, um, position itself as NGOs. For example, in China, if you register as an NGO, um, you need to address a lot of challenges. So under this circumstance, so uh, these type of think tanks can register them as the consulting companies. Well, it is like a think tank in disguise. So a lot of think tanks are actually um, registered in other forms, but actually what they do is a think tank, what think tanks do. So because of that, exactly, uh, it is hard for these non-governmental think tanks to win uh, trust from the governments and the general public. Now, for example, the uh, Pang, uh, Pangol Institute, uh, well, it, it does enjoy a very good reputation and influence, but still they are in very rare case. So the question is how we can win uh, the trust. A second, for non-governmental think tanks, two things are important. First, if we can not be like these high-level think tanks in China that can have direct influence uh, on the decision making, but actually, uh, most of the non-governmental ones are not influential, at least not to the decision makers. But what we can do is to make sure we can serve the general public. We need to pay attention to this um, in the, the, the bottom issues that are close to the general public. Uh, so we don't have to look up higher uh, serving directly the policy makers. We really need to look at the frontiers because the frontiers are usually the places where they shoulder the heaviest uh, burdens but, and have access to the biggest number of population. So actually, this is exactly where we can manage. So if we can uh, make it at this level, we can make our contribution. The second point is that 
we what we do is not just writing reports and then put them in the closet. So for non-governmental think tanks must uh, engage themselves because as NGOs, what you do is not just writing a policy suggestion. It is more important that the policy can be implemented and generate real benefits to the general public. So whatever subjects you research on, you need to make sure you will make continuous efforts, which will finally lead to visible results and visible benefits. It is really, really important. Another important area uh, or another important point is to make sure we uh, build up our uh, accountability uh, for the general public and then we need to have the capacity to do so. Well, very good point. And going down to the frontiers that I believe there's a big room for non-governmental think tanks to go deeper in that direction. Now the internet companies and energy businesses also started to go down to tier three, tier four cities. Uh, it is the same um, that the think tanks can also do in that direction. Well then, now let me move forward into our next panelist, Mr. Hu Jun from Anbong. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for CCG's invitation. And Professor Li has given us a wonderful opening. Very good. Yeah, exactly. He has made his points very clear. So actually, it's the very sharp, uh, what he raised are sharp questions. So for think tanks, be a wolf or be a sheep. But whatever we are, we need to look at what we do. Let me now share with you what Unbound has been doing. Uh, we are think tanks. This is what we do. We were established in 19... Uh, uh, 93, so 27 years of development have witnessed us re uh, researching on various different issues, including the geopolitical issues, economic issues, etc. So the year we started, we have seen the most uh, brilliant ups and downs of China's reform and up and the brilliant um, achievement, of course. And we personally witnessed the two financial crises uh, in Asia, in America, and we also seen the tensions between the US and China and the changing European Union, etc. So as an, a real observer and also a participant of that trend. I believe we, we have to say that oh, we're lucky to be born in this era. And according to our research, uh, some of our achievements were uh, actually uh, recognized by our government institutions, including the researchers on the coal fund, uh, reform and opening up, uh, family policy, etc., and also the, uh, the big market in China, issues like that. So what I'm sharing with you today is the recent studies we do. First is about the Yangtze River economic belt. So President Xi, uh, in his visit to Nanjing, uh, reiterate the importance because at the beginning of May this year, we published a paper about a reinterpretation uh, of the value of the Yangtze River economic belt. And then President Xi made an important speech at uh, May, which um, we can find that have a lot of uh, common points with our research results because we're living in an era with uh, 
changing external and internal environment. So it is really important for us to uh, make sure we find some opportunities to offset the negative impact of international uh, crises. And another important thing is that we need to find some uh, ways to uh, respond properly to the impact of uh, external cultures. Um, so perfectly in aligned. Another thing is about China's urbanization. Uh, 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 raised the POD principle, which means passenger uh, go first principle, which is uh, actually the central value with building a city. So urbanization, the first round is already over. So what should we do in the second round? the second half because volume is no longer the driving force of growth but it is remain our job to renovate the existing ones last year in Chengdu we had our first uh, uh, POD uh, forum and many consulting companies and think tanks in China participated another point I want to mention is a clean non-agriculture development society because we believe that in the future economic development in China, it is important for us to find a real carrier, uh, new energy. So it is really important for us to uh, uh, make sure that uh, we give into full play a new energy. Well, there are a lot of breakdown issues, of course, because I don't have time for details. But anyway, my point is that we need to find out the realistic issues in China's current economic development path, and we really need to focus on those realistic issues. So from the central government to the local one, we need to find areas where we can make some fundamental differences and that is why we as non-governmental think tank can play our role thank you very much for sharing with us what Ambon has been doing now we give the floor to our guest Li Gang from Tencent Research Institute well actually as um, please Mr. Li thank you uh, we're actually we're kind of uh, unbound. Uh, we uh, read your uh, business and uh, economic uh, publications every day. Um, and just now, uh, Professor Yi has shared with us about uh, whether we should be a wolf or a sheep. Well, I personally believe that it's not just a simple choice. I think our uh, institute is uh, from a is a business. Institute. So maybe in name we're think tank, but actually um, it is for uh, the benefits of the outsiders to better understand it. Uh, so and now Tencent uh, uh, Institute was actually a research center of Tencent. And then there was a center to study uh, the connection between the, uh, Tencent and the industry. And in 2014, um, Tencent Research Institute was uh, established, a very young uh, so-called think tank. So our current research focuses on three areas. The first one, is our internal research and development covering legal, uh, industrial, economic, and uh, uh, social sciences. In terms of legal research, uh, it includes potent, uh, patent law, um, and in industry research, it uh, focuses on the industry report and the impact on uh, economic growth. About others, we have this. Uh, 
digital um, security and many others. So in terms of social research, um, it was uh, started in 2017. And then in the third area uh, is our academic communication and exchanges. Hopefully that we can um, facilitate communication with uh, academic institutions, universities, and other businesses. And also share our um, experience and expertise within the company. Um, and speaking of uh, partnership with others that we have with uh, Beijing University and other, uh, we, we initiated a, our science and technology uh, program and many others um, together with our partners, bringing together researchers and young scholars to research on the dissemination and the development of the internet. I've been hosted for five times for all the specific topics, especially for the three key researching areas, are open to the public. Two or three books to publish every year, and scholars of more than 10 books has already published by the names of person or by the name of the organization including the project of anthropology and for other topics and fields, and including research. Uh, uh, the, this topic mainly has been open to the public. And for the Tencent philosophy project, and also including the report of philosophy, actually we are in charge of writing that book in 2018. We have published that uh, book uh, on that. <coughs> So we are the we are the think tank, but actually it's a very special type of think tank. We are think tank within a business, a corporation, within a company. Position is mainly serving for the company, serving for the corporation. Actually, the standing point is not the other TTI. The goal is more fine-sided and more comprehensive, and also for compared with other public. Think tanks, all the data and materials, mainly, mainly about business development, just like I mentioned, internet related. And there are different sources of information, especially for changes, landscape of the industry and cooperation development progress, not only on the research on the technology, but also for the technology, including the labs of Hanju. And we have some cooperation with them within the cooperation and also uh, very regularly we published uh, some reports on that part that's my sharing thank you Lee. it's very significant like you have mentioned especially for china the corporations has organized a lot of internal think tanks private think tanks we are talking about the very non governmental think tank And compared with other think tanks, it's like non-governmental think tanks like Tencent uh, research institutes. Actually, we put into such a group because I'm not researching on the think tank. Like working with Wang, we have been researching on the very major powers think tanks, and for other developed countries or the major countries think tank. And we think that the data actually is within your hand. Mostly, data is in your hand like your think tanks like you, especially if a dragon head and the process as the most of the data. As they are restructuring the ecosystem, if you use the data, not only suitable for your business, but also that's very profitable for public policy making. While we are working with these institutions to ensure that the data can be more publicized in this way to serve as better for the public. Thank you. And following that, we have the Anna Angela Ma coming from our Hong Kong Foundation, the Community Relationship Director. We know that our Hong Kong Foundation is a very famous think tank in Hong Kong. Uh, Zhong Jianhua, the very uh, director, and uh, we very was also the chair of this think tank, very famous think tank. 
across the whole globe. Let's welcome Mr. Miss Angela. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Oh, thank you again. Thank you, Mabel, and many thanks to Dr. Henry Wang and also Dr. James McGann for having me. I'm most honored to be speaking on behalf of our Hong Kong Foundation and share some of my personal experience with, with this very prestigious panel. Um, as stated in today's panel theme, the whole world is experiencing an unprecedented crisis in 2020, and that is COVID-19, which has caused not only a lot of lives, but also livelihoods. And as this invisible black swan has changed the world with enormous social, economic, and political impacts, our Hong Kong Foundation as a nonprofit and non-government think tank is quick to join in the global think tank community for solidarity and work together to effectively respond to this crisis through numerous global town halls, summits, and forums like this one. We also understand the importance of innovative ideas the ability to think out of the box in order to build a better future with long-term strategic visions and concrete implementations. I'd like to illustrate with one case study to elaborate a bit more on this. Um, as most of you would know that Hong Kong is the number one city with the least affordable home prices for many years in a row. The average living space in Hong Kong is only 170 square feet per person, just about the size of one car parking space. And Hong Kong has also one of the highest population density in the world. In order to solve the severe land shortage and housing crisis in Hong Kong, our Hong Kong Foundation has done an in-depth research report on enhanced East Lantau Metropolis, which is a proposal to build a man-made island that will provide up to 2,200 hectares of land that can accommodate a population of up to 1.1 million people. Our research recommendation was successfully adopted by the Hong Kong SAR government, which is now entitled the Lantau Tomorrow Project. We use a two-pronged approach in our stakeholder advocacy, working closely with top government officials and policymakers, as well as reaching out to the community at large, politicians, NGOs, academia, business sector, and professional bodies. I have personally met with all 18 district council chairs and councillors, organized talks to hundreds of public housing residents, hosting seminars to different business chambers in Hong Kong, youth organizations, local think tanks, and also communities in the third sector. More importantly, this example illustrates the dare to dream spirit, reimagining a new vision for Hong Kong with a game changer. As this man-made island will not only provide affordable housing, it will also enable us to reimagine a new town with innovative urban design to improve the quality of living, build new hospitals, schools, sports arena, technology hubs and mice venues, etc., to create new industries, offer new job opportunities, and narrow the gap between the haves and the have-nots. The plan will also build new infrastructures to enable strategic transport links with the one hour living circle connection within the Greater Bay Area. And all these will be possible if we dare dream and dare do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Angela, uh, for your good speech. And and Angela has shared with us about the policies made and cases sharing, especially for they have some instabilities in Hong Kong. I think the town has been working on upgrading for Hong Kong environment, especially for all the different groups has been coordinating between all the parties. And the single town is playing the role for coordinating and bridging this panel if we have the expert providing the other ideas, especially for all the environment is very complicated and very dividing environment, giving that. And we have such a very flexible researchers to form such a mechanism to play the role and to coordinate that to be functional. No, let's welcome Harry. Thank you, Mel. Dr. Mel. I think, I think that today is very uh, branchy, is very good, efficient, especially for sharing and for a lot of 
very grassroots level, uh, think tanks or the social think tanks has got engaged into such a discussion. It's very significant, especially this morning we have Chinese social think tank net has been officially launched this morning. I do we think that a social think tank has entered into a new era? And how to explain such a significance, especially today's mainly topic centered on the major change and the revolution and the big development. And it is very relative here, like uh, the middle level wealthy for the society and 2035 for vision planned in this year. That 40 years has been passed since the reform opening. And after the 18th Congress meeting, the China's economy, social policies, politicals has been changing so much. But what is the major change lying in the social think tank has been thriving? How to say that? I would like to explain. Like, 2015 about the uh, some ideas and the plans on that part in the documentation in the market in the government files as very very uh, alternative very gui guiding including diversification of the political support as well as for other discussions and ideas providing we call it like a ramp as a social or the private home Similarly to the private companies, in the past 40 years, the very experience for make us richer private companies developing. And if the private companies play the very role to boost the market, like half of the market was owned by the private corporations, 90% of the job positions, 60% of tax, and how much proportion of the innovation coming from private corporations. But after the 18th CPC Congress and at the beginning of the reforming, and just like the Deng Xiaoping has visited the Shenzhen areas about boosting development, private cooperation of the 18th Chair Xi, China President Xi, has mentioned about the think tank development, private own, uh, including about uh, China and the central government has offered a very file. A Chinese representative gave the very official authoritative ideas put on the paper to put that as a guideline for the industry to develop. And they put that in the file to facilitate development of the think tank. So we think the private own of the social level of think tank. And that will be very important driver for development market. Mechanism has been form forming. Uh, in the past 40 years, probably that very trend for development after the opening and reform. We need a soft power developed, and we need to have two dimensions of diplomatic level enhancement. We need more engagement, and we need more procurement from government level. And even we can say that to play a role uh, as a driving force and to activate the whole market. So. We uh, are saying here that the development of social mechanism are thriving, just like uh, Professor Li Gang has mentioned, a lot of things need to be improved. We need to be earthy or to be practical, especially for the social mechanism, for the grassroots level. Democracy is very important. And we call it think tank as a ninth party. You know that China has eight parties for a part of from CBC. The new party, we can call it a nice party, especially for the think tank, as a new force or new supportive decision making support. Not only, like Madden has mentioned, that 1,500 in, in Beijing. And for another 1,000 were located in other places, so we have district level or the county level. And for all the different levels of uh, for different levels of government to offer very assistance, all the ideas for them, and even within the corporations, uh, within the bureaus, and have a very virtuous cycle to boosting and driving. And for opening such a market for the same time and for the future development, especially for enhance our image on international arena and to tell the Chinese story, to get the Chinese voice heard and and to construct the common shared future as a very crucial. Just like a smaller boat, it's easier to be flexible and agile, can turn the 
direction very soon, more diversified agile also goes like the smaller boat is easier, flexible, agile, more agile, and to contribute further ideas and to all the levels of government uh, for the five layers of government, five tiers of government, and to enhance our decision efficiency, uh, decision making efficiency, and to cut the error. That's very meaningful, significant, and also for people to people levels, uh, communication, diplomatic relationship, and especially uh, some very sensitive ideas, but actually for the private or all the social levels of uh, the same terms, it's very easy for communication for people to people. From our experience, it's very significant that we have such a convenience to bridge between all the people to people level. Last point, I would like to say that for social think tanks has been just as thriving from the file has been put on the paper and uh, for officially facilitation of think tank development only five years since that and we still have a long journey ahead especially for entrepreneurs we need to have a close eye on that and Megan said that for think tanks, it's mostly for the hope of the schools and for the buildings for universities. And think about that if we are donate for the very for for the policies making, think about the very important. That's much more valuable compared to the school. May may hope a school can solve the problem of like thousands of kids. But if you solve the policy issue, probably that means more helpful for millions of students. So actually, the donation for the think tanks even more significant apart from procurement, uh, from the project deployment, such like the diversification, openness, and more openness, Chinese entrepreneurs make, they can play that role like Chinese elites and to ensure that they can support further for think tanks. Today's very opportunity, very timely, given the background of the pandemic, we are thinking of the future and for the future development of the world, the fighting come to stage, the development of the whole globe, and for the social think tanks that will be playing more and more important role here. Thanks a lot, uh, Harry. As a very party of the social think tank, especially for interactions between the policy changes and for internal regime or external of the regime, for such a think tanks should be that draw more concern, uh, draw more attention, not only about the flows of the money, cash, and also about the flow of information. And for entrepreneurs, Chinese enterprises, for all these ways and resources, we should care more about the social development only through that and to ensure that the policy decision making ecosystem can be facilitated including about the inside outside regime or and abroad to play the role now let's welcome Dr. Ryu Pangu that's a lot of organizers thank you a lot for it is really honor for me to represent the Pangu and represent President of Yi Pang of Pangu to be here. Uh, thanks a lot for, for Li Gang. Professor have a, such a high evaluation of Pangu. Finally, in 2013, the very young think tanks, mainly for digital economy and for the elder care, and also for the high quality development in different places. A survey is targeting, including about more than 10 branches of government and more than 10 or 20 provinces, autonomous provinces, including all these places. And just like the moderator has said, we talk more on industries. I would like to put in two parts. First, how we understand about 100 years major change. Second, how we assure that the think tank's role can be played about the 100 years unprecedented change. She has a very judge and a very evaluation on the Chinese change of direction. From a full pass, I would like to share with you. The first is about the China's mindset on that part. So, from the market's view, and while the engines of economic development has been slowing down, the pie of the economy growth has shifting from the growth center into the inventory center. Like 100 for the pie. For, for for gross parts, uh, pie like the ten thousand or more than one thousand, like every 
person got growth of income for each year. Like the number ones and don't care like who got bigger, who got smaller. But if it come to be much smaller pie, only 100, or next year come to be 90 for the total volume of the pie. Well, this is actually the multilateral and bilateral conflict uh, causes. Well, at the beginning of the founding in China, organization rate is, was only uh, uh, 16% and then 60% by 2019. So for every year, it is the 1% growth. In the modern history, this is uh, achievement unprecedented in human history. Uh, about the aging problem, by 2013, there are 200 million. Um, and then by 2033, there will be 300 million. So maybe in terms of the speed, China is not number one, but in, in Japan, in US, in France, we can say that it takes more than 100 years for the US and uh, uh, France to complete its urbanization process, but in China, it takes only a dozen years. It's something really impressive. Uh, and also, I believe you all um, stand in the same level of understanding of me. So given the current urbanization rate and the aging population, we can see you can find it nowhere else in this world can have this kind of achievement. I believe this China, in this area alone, China is standing on top of the world. Is it good or bad, uh, correct or wrong? No, it's not what it matters. What matters is that ever since the beginning, China was in a different position. And in other words, China's think tanks were in different situations. So as a professional in think tanks, I am so proud because I believe this is something that I am really excited about. Uh, about the new role in this new age. The first thing we need to understand is that first we need to define the role of uh, think tanks. From our perspective, we believe that uh, think tanks will need to align its academic intelligence with the decision making of the government. So only by that can we uh, tackle the real issues, providing real solutions. About how we can better play that role. Well, this year, our institute, ever since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic until last night, we already organized hundreds of reviews throughout China in dozens of uh, provinces, interviewed uh, more than 200 local government officials. So I believe that to play a bigger role and a better role, first of all, we need to be open-minded and inclusive. And second, we need to set up a good platform where we can really play that role. So for Chinese uh, think tanks, particularly those private ones, I believe we need will have this uh, sense of, of contribution and commitment. Um, that means the private think tanks must be really engaged in policy making, but we do not expect to take any credit from that participation and contribution. 
and last but not least about this open-mindedness we need to have this opening up so that we can uh, open up to the outside world to others views and then for our own benefit to grow well very interesting point well for private think tanks actually we have uh, provided some references to the policymakers in uh, different countries and we do participate in policy making process but whether we, there's any credit that we can take actually it is not something we uh, really care about because we are there um, so here for this um, think for think tanks i believe that for, for young scholars researchers i believe still we need some some sort of recognition anyway well thank you now let me include uh, Yuan Yue from uh, data way horizon a very influential institute welcome well um think tanks a uh, very interesting concept I believe that um, the Shanghai uh, Academy of Social Science uh, together with us and according to them you know, we were regarded as number one in terms of uh, non-governmental think tank but actually some people think that we are not actually a uh, think tank we are business but actually I believe that yes indeed there are differences between business and think tank but being a, a private company uh, or being uh, a think tank, I don't think there's any fundamental differences as, as long as we can do our job right and well. So I, I believe there are some benefits we can learn from uh, this business uh, mechanism because we need to be more responsive uh, we need to focus on CSR. Uh, so whether you're a business or not, I believe the business, the business think tank and or the non-governmental think tank um, are just like different schools of theory. They play their different roles, but to some extent there are some overlaps and some common grounds. So of course we need to see that a lot of business uh, think tanks, they follow their professional rules. But in my understanding, a business think tank is different because it is highly responsive. For example, if you take one or five million from a, a individual donator, you have to strong sense of responsibility that you, you need to make sure that you bring value out of that one or five million. So our, the results of our job shouldn't be just uh, academic, pure academic. It should be able to tackle some real issues and uh, while remaining objective. So this is mechanism or non-business think tank uh, mechanisms uh, are in different uh, systems. They have uh, applied different methods. So the business think tank uh, uh, may prefer uh, efficiency or visibility, and but actually there's no right or wrong, good or bad. It is just that we focus on different aspects, but to do what kind of think tank you need to uh, have this a long-term uh, view for me my personal choice is to have this uh, business thing now the second part is about technology in terms of the industry or the circle um let me give you an example uh, like individual farmer they open up their own farm and run that farm Actually, uh, everyone has their own way of learning and have their own way of getting it out or having this output. So here, uh, our analysis, our research should be based on models and algorithms represent 
supported by different technologies. So, from my understanding, that we now have some algorithms, and our software are based on the algorithms. We apply for patents for those algorithms. So, I mean, my point is here we have different business uh, models, like we have different schools or theories. Now, the third part is that whatever schools uh, we are in, uh, we develop in parallel. Uh, for example, I personally write some uh, papers about the uh, research on the implementation of the policy from the central government to streamline um, administrative procedures uh, and uh, improve the quality of the public services. I believe this is a wonderful report and wonderful research, very realistic and very useful. The, here I'm talking about development in parallel or coexistence in development. Um, it is like uh, martial arts. Uh, there are different schools of martial arts. But who is the best? It doesn't really matter. Everyone has their strengths and their weaknesses. So what we're researching on is something uncertain. It is more like a goal. So it is not necessarily true that you're right, I'm wrong. No. So the best is that we focus on similar issues, but everyone has different voices, different opinions. So we do different things. We have different perspectives. So I, I strongly believe that we have a different types of things doing, uh, using different methods, working in different environments, focusing on different subjects, but we're doing the same thing. What we do is using data, analyzing data, and putting the information behind the data into policies, into a flow and loop or circle. For example, uh, one topic, uh, social governance, we focus on capacity building, broad investigation and data analysis model, and then down to the police department at the community level, uh, how do they deal with those kinds of uh, fraud or uh, even crime? Uh, we collect data, we analyze, and then we translate those into actions and uh, suggestions. So, uh, from the concept level then to the action level, this is what we do. We connect them because what drives the society to develop is the right the right model. So and there's no definite uh, definition about uh, what role you should play and how exactly you should do it. You can resort to um, different ways uh, towards the same direction. You can have your own models, you can have your own methods. Uh, anyway, we, we need to do things uh, positive, we need to create benefits. We really need to provide constructive opinions and suggestions. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yan, for your sharing. Uh, we're so glad to see that there are so many schools of think tanks in uh, China, whether it is the Wudang School or Emei School. Um, but actually, yes, uh, non-governmental think tanks really play important role in inspiring people, in creating ideas and references. So different types of think tanks enjoy their own methods, their own ecosystem and procedures. I think this is quite um, uh, ideal because you can, as policymakers, they can hear different voices. Um, 
before making public policies, because the government stands on the level uh, that is more on the public interest. But then, as decision makers, they can listen to different voices. Well, this is quite universal, but I strongly oppose this because it is not that one think tank acting like God, uh, giving the only true or right uh, choice. So the, the thing is, we can give people choices and then people make their own choice based on what we suggest. So, like the white colors in China, the biggest class in China. But it, my point is that uh, there's no need to define what type of think tank you are. Like in the US, there are different kinds of think tanks doing different things. So this is what we call diversity. And diversity is the key. Uh, do not label think tanks because you just do what you do. So diversity itself is a very healthy environment. This is a very good point. And this is what we have in this general ecosystem. And every think tank is based on different running um, systems. And of course, we uh, would like to hear more voices to have um, different players. Thank you. Now, let me give the floor to Mr. Zhou Hucheng from Chahar Institute. Uh, thank you. Well, I'm the last one, big pressure for me. And particularly after Mr. Yuan, uh, very big pressure for me. Very glad to be here uh, for this CCG hosted uh, forum. Uh, Chahar Institute is the relatively smaller one. Established in 2009, so 11 years already. So I'm here to share with you our idea. Uh, so first of all, in this changing world, in this changing time, indeed, we can find a lot of opportunities. Now the White House already uh, recognize uh, nice, the beginning of the transition team of Biden uh, uh, president-elect. So I mean, there, this transition will start. So there are some certainties. But one uncertainty still remains. That is, uh, the uh, US em embassy to China just organized a dialogue uh, saying that whether it is Trump uh, administration or Biden administration, U.S. policy toward China will not see major changes. That means the China-U.S. relations will not see major changes just because the power transfer. But one thing remains certain is that Biden is different from Trump. Trump brought so many uncertainties, but according to the, uh, the history of uh, Biden, both his, uh, his team has, is different from Trump. So uh, when Biden takes office, there will be some certain things happening and also still some things remain un uncertain. Uh, but that means there will be some opportunities for change too. So the um, uh, CCG and many other think tanks uh, have done a lot of research already. I believe we can find a lot of valuable information from your research. Uh, but I believe uh, with this evolving situation, both in the US and China and in the world, we will have more opportunities for further research uh, about uh, uh, private think tanks. 
I think we cannot afford to do it all.、Uh, we need to stay focused on things, say, in di diplomatic relations,、uh, because only by staying focused can we go deeper and、uh, put out some profound、uh, results. The next point is that think tanks need to do the research well, but also need to、uh, do some practical work.、Uh, some previous speakers have emphasized it too, because think tanks、uh, can provide intelligence, wisdom, and references to decision makers. As、our appearance has been drawn from that, we need to do more practice apart from research, especially for persuading others. I try to persuade. I compare with the within the regime, it is more diversified, especially if you cannot、uh, invite the、uh, foreign friends to drink Chinese traditional wine or the. And multi, but actually for the public own think tanks cannot do that. We can invite our friends to drink the alcohol. And that's why for the second track, double track, diplomatic, only in the practice we can have more flexibility and we can make more friends. In this way, and、uh, we can serve for the public, no matter the CCG or for us. We have organized several. Forums and also we have conducted dialogue. The dialogue is kind of work. Apart from dialogue, we also have the friendship we meet.、Uh, we are extending the net to serve for the China landscape. Specifically, like China and South Korea, especially because of South Seoul, so we hosting scores of forums and. Traveling between Seoul and Beijing for the media, diplomatic and think tank diplomatic university diplomatic, and to have communications with the South Korea government, and we had to a lot and to seek more common ground between South Korea and China, and playing very positive role on that part. The first. Point I would like to say, not only as the driver, I think more than that. Not only not only about the mouthpiece, not only about the talk about that, and we need to demonstrate, elaborate. To not only about the it's, instead of、uh, it's not only about a tank, it's about a sink. We need to think with our own idea, with our own experience drawn from that, and conclusion drawn from experience to assure that the decision makers can see the difference and to hear the different voice. Very sounds valuable. Suggestions can be heard from us, and not only as the mouthpiece, but but also as the think, the content maker. And as a strategy, propaganda publicizer. Actually, USA has been working on the strategy. Publicizer has been through many years, but we haven't started yet. And talking about Chinese diplomatic landscape in the past several years, China has made、um, two aspects: and positive and reactive. Especially, we need to solve the problem of reactive too much reactive, especially for Trump government. For China's image internationally, it's like the、uh, polluting our image internationally, and how we can solve such、uh, stigma of Chinese image and by like like Trump did, and we need to remove such a st stigma. Like Henry has mentioned, we need to tell Chinese story. Do not let others to stigmatize China, and who gonna hear Chinese stories? That's the step we will discuss further. Uh, on this aspect, to tell the story、uh, to the people in other countries, apart from elite, 
but also to assure that all these uh, people, the civil, civilians, or uh, United Terrorists, like uh, if the normal person uh, can have a very mindset about the Chinese, about China, and because they are the very important force to convey the Chinese image. The six, just like I would like to respond to Henry's ideas about the business. A very valuable call on the same time is mainly about the president. Our CCG president is President Wang, and our Taihai is Chang Hua Ming. Because they are very influential persons as a president, and Harry is the very councillor, city councillor. And our leader is the vice director for the Council for International Relationship. Basically, it is need a lot of funding, and also the CCG president has issued a lot of funding requirements from other process and not only support soft and hard where like the former speaker has mentioned as a nice party a non cbc party from the think tank maybe a next step we can take our social think tanks to turn into a new party a school no matter the business type of, or not business type in, in this way we can call it a social think tank a contributor of wisdom and we can Put that into a new, a new party, like a new force, and to be emphasized, to be noteworthy, and to assure we can get more support. Thank you. <coughs> uh, first, Iran has been touched a lot, especially we are sitting here uh, for the very elites of the think tanks or the founder, initiator, or the senior manager. We have conducted a lot of policies making and talking to the. Our officers in the government or to the social civilians, and we are the very important part of Chinese. The very class of learners, and scholars, and we have some standard, we have some common sense when you sit down to discuss about what we think. I memorize that no matter facing the Europe. They have been working together for a lot of uh, time, including about publishing some report to the government or doing something uh, assistant of our part. And we are hosting this event. We hope we can meet all together after so long time off from each other. We can join together, just like Harry has mentioned, with the support of the business sector and the other group of Uncle Tsai, like Joe has mentioned. Especially for the for the part of the elite of all different layers of classes, including about lawyers and the content, they have their own association. <coughs> no matter what kind of schools, we are a big school. Activity in the South Market in China given such a very background and how we coordinate. How we can ensure that we can join all together to face the challenges, including about national markets or discussing about China. We are telling Chinese story to them, very important. In this morning, we have friends from international friends, their understanding of the Chinese market, they have lacking of uh, such an understanding on Chinese ideology. And we can showcase the Chinese ideology about the changes we have made about our mindset we have made no matter from central government or industry level or the academy field has been changing so much and, and now at times we uh, don't have too much time like two or three minutes for each one of us to explain further about my idea or comments on that Lee first I want to put it simple, especially from the view of an process. The positioning is, it, you are talking about uh, join together. Actually, it's not about like uh, all 
要坚持一点自己的独立性。Hugging, hugging all together, like in each cluster. Mainly, we need to insist on such an independence. It's very important. Just like working in enterprise, we have a lot of limitation or the restrictions. It's very troublesome,、uh, especially for the public think think tank members. And for us, it's much higher requirement. So our standard is very clear and mainly serving for business. The cooperation of the industry and the Chinese Chinese story. The question is how we can coordinate to play a more important role, or what's your comments on the future perspective? Either question you can answer. And my idea about the coordination is that for Chinese think tanks, especially for the social think tanks, in general, that still we are lacking of the quantity. Uh, from the Pangu's experience, we can draw from that the very decision making, reasonably, a policy making procedures need all the different dimensions of information. The more dimensions information we get, the better policy we have. Social think tank development Needs the support, encouragement from all the sectors, including about you have mentioned for the evaluation. The statutes, like Henry Council has mentioned about all different enterprises should support development of think tanks, and for the social think tanks between each other, they also should have more interactions between each other. Second, about telling Chinese stories, my idea is that. To tell a good story, we need to do a good story. We need to conduct, it, make our own stories, and if we do it with all the different angles and to make more content within it, in this way you can tell a very vivid story because you made it, and people can understand it. People people can hear it, and people will recognize it.、Uh, At the very beginning of starting up a business, and my standard and benchmark is coming from the Blueberry Company as my goal target, and now my target has changed a lot. And the criteria has changed a lot. The very feature that people do not understand about is coverage. And all algorithm writers, they have no idea who is the one behind the algorithm. And for our social think tanks, it's very crucial to ensure the modernization, organization building instead of like one plus one.、Uh, all these talents plus talent, scholars is one type. I think that is mainly about organization think tank. No matter you are business or individual. The advantage of the organization, we believe, the only excellent organizations can have excellent yield. And if the eight person cannot coordinate that, then you will not have the good yielding. If you want to live a good life, you need to have other people to live a good life. And some people give other people very good ideas, but actually has no idea how to survive himself. And I'm, I've been reading,、uh, writing some reports mainly about operation management and the mode, trends. That is very related to the outcome yielding. We should emphasize that about the think tank management operation, the mode to operate and to optimize it. Thank you, Yuan. It's very significant in China for the social think tanks. It's just like touching a stone across the river, and all the organization is in this form. Apart from the industry base, but also as individual organization, how we can in an organic way to ensure that all the talents can be connected to our good idea. That idea is worth it to explore further.、Um, and all this. A very good ideas as we hear, and I would like to share that for the social think tanks, the private ownership, all the social level, such a very feature 
and for development of market that is very crucial. On the decision making market is very important. And we need to encourage the ecosystem building. Also, we need to encourage the different forms of development for Chinese decision making assistance market will have more choices and also they will have more flexibility solutions in front of them. And to the new year, we're big data, especially for a lot of corporations just like CG in the past of several years, we are working with the very C trip corporations and providing us a lot of suggestions on the trips working with the LinkedIn and we take photos of a big data of LinkedIn about the graduation market of Chinese universities. I think in this field in China, we will have other process just like we has mentioned. For well, enterprises cooperation with the think tanks and for the public policy market and for the social think tanks to explore a further space on that path. As for the future big data year was a 5G year, probably will bring new changes on the think tanks. But no matter how changes that the essence is there. And 18 Congress CPC summits encourage such a very private ownership. Basically, for the private ownership or the, the social level, such a very feature of the think tanks probably will play a very driving functions on that part. For China, just like Lu uh, Fangguo of the very committee director of the Chinese, Chinese CPC, the, the biggest mistake is mainly about decision mistake. The biggest waste is mainly about the decision waste. Like a decision can have such a penetration across all the levels. If the decision is right, then everybody benefits. That would be like a down up and a gain twice. And if a wrong error, probably means like uh, down twice and a gain half. The Chinese old thing goes like that. And basically, that five years checking, and also we get private ownership within this. Basically, we believe that we can have further in depth analysis of the policies and the depth of the surveys and all the engagement from the social levels and within the regime, think tanks, including universities, think tanks, and other process think tanks, they have all their different features. In this way, that hundreds of flowers blossoming all together, competing with each other for the Chinese high efficiency of think tanks, that would be very beneficial. And offer you one or two cases, such like several years ago, that about policies, policies about our traditions, and the Xi and Kuchang, the very number one, number two leaders in China has uh, approved such a very traditions while working on CPTPP uh, from the very first day of Trump, exiting TPP, and uh, we offer a report that we should get engaged into TPP. At that time, like, most people are against us, so we got our ICP. And when the USA are building such a group, well, we are joined the group built by USA. And actually, after all these years, and she, she has mentioned that, and we should think further to join the TPP. And the Premier also said that we should get engaged into such a TPP or join in TPP. And the Trump discussing about TPP is there. The smart tank member expert said that, and why you think differently? And for that day's ideas, people probably think that was impossible. But after the time, has been checking with a lot of reports and with a lot of articles to check to have in depth analysis. After that, that would be very beneficial for Chinese for the opening up. And then we find a very large in the tunnel, silver light in the tunnel, probably after the IC, IECP, we would like to join the CTPP. That's a very good example so that we are doing our part to facilitate the policy, turning into a better direction. And for the social communications and through all these scenarios discussed about China future development, just like the private ownership of enterprises. That is a similar show uh, compared with the social think tanks. A lot of potential there to be tapped. Thanks a lot for all the panelists. I believe that Liu has a lot to, to, to talk. There is my speech here. I would like to add a few points. And for the social think tanks, especially for competitiveness, competing in such a market, uh, I feel positive. <laughs> Chinese social think tank development must uh, notice that never 
never be assigned by some fund or assigned by some capital or assigned by some group. And if you are the most piece for some group, then probably that you are going to the wrong way. And no country can say that public policies can be guided by any group or organization, including internet companies or the internal institutes. No matter how you persuade that and within the corporation sometimes that is must serving for the corporation. They are very basic in there. But if you are working for a corporation at the same time, actually you should say that instead of saying uh, the very uh, Hy uh, hypocrisy to say that you are serving for the society or public, actually you are serving for a corporation. As the American content provider, for business or a supplier, uh, we can uh, level the playground. The, the thing is, if you want to have a long-term development in Chinese market, we must make sure that we have a clear uh, distance with, uh, from those uh, pure businesses. We can call for business for uh, to to make more donations. And I said before, we we used to uh, actually we can be funded, but we cannot be uh, influenced by some interest groups or even our uh, fund providers. So this is the key for think tank to develop in a real sense. That's it. Thank you. I just wanted to add, so about what think tank do, what's your relationship with the government or the market? Uh, one um, professor was said, okay, um, to my understanding, it is like a mystery of the government and you're not a white of the government because anyway it's just a metaphor so with the think tank and the government actually they supplement with each other it's just a, a, maybe a joke but actually it reflects to some extent the relationship between think tank and the government so actually at think tank we do not speak for any specific interest group but we provide services and references to governments. Well, three sentences. One, uh, telling our own story well, because think tanks are different from each other. For example, if we serve a villager, as long as we can provide them with valuable suggestions, the villagers will have some successful experience which can be copied somewhere else. So, I mean, that every think tank has different positions, but it's different roles. So we need to tell our own stories well. The second is that we need to make sure that we provide our clients with real solutions. We provide them with real, good solutions, particularly when there are some tensions between China and other countries or the might be up and down. We need to be proactive and flexible in mitigating between each other. Okay, I will respond later. So we provide references to different groups of people. 
So international community uh, think tanks may, must make sure that we tell our story as well, so that we can make sure other people can understand us in the right way and support us in the right way. And in the long run, how to tell that story, I, but I think that many of these who uh, tell Chinese stories may only use Mandarin, but in the future, it is really important for them to speak a language that everyone else can understand. So it is highly necessary that we can have um, new talented people joining us, making sure we can tell stories in a way understandable by people from other countries. My third point now is, as uh, previously mentioned, the more attention and care and support should be given to traffic content. While staying distant from others, but still not too far. So we really need to keep this delicate balance of being independent and objective. So that we can have really some influence to the decision makers while having close connections with the real problems. So we need to strike a delicate balance. And that is why we need to learn. Uh, we need to bring in, in new people. Oh, let me respond. Uh, one thing we need to be particularly careful that last year we translated to um, propaganda books. If you are thinking that this word propaganda is something we really need to be careful about because propaganda should not uh, be regarded as part of our job as think tank. For example, in China, if you are a think tank and you try to do some propaganda and try to persuade other people to do something, then it's not very sustainable. Well, then this, uh, I don't think um, here, this word is not what you understand. It's not propaganda. So here, this word lobby or propaganda is uh, actually based on some specific interest. So I think a suggestion is, should be the right word. It's not lobby, it's not uh, propaganda. You should, you should use the word uh, suggestion. I think the meaning is uh, clear. So um, anyway, uh, let's forget about the wording, but it's uh, really important that uh, we realize the current challenges. We really need to understand the existing problem and remain flexible. Uh, we may receive different voices, uh, different opinions. Well, last, uh, Mr. Hu from Anbang. So I'll be brief. We all mentioned about about China's intelligent market, but how big is that market? Is there a ceiling about the future development and the China's relations with other places? Uh, what, how big the role is for? Uh, think that I believe uh, it depends on two things, our government and, of course, ourselves. So as think tank, uh, whether we call ourselves as non-governmental or independent ones, every think tank, I believe, is good at different things. 
but uh, we both need to stay professional. We need to have our own expertise uh, and our focus. And we really need to uh, build up our capacities. And because only by that, uh, government uh, trust us. Uh, today, the forum is a very good forum. So I think CCG has given us a very good opportunity uh, because we're from different areas, focusing on different subjects. So being together here at this forum, we can build this ecosystem. Uh, not about uh, how, which one does what, but uh, working together as a team towards a common direction, making sure everyone makes their own distribution, and then put out something valuable. That's it. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, well, it's time to conclude this session, but uh, I am really impressed by your excellent points. Uh, indeed, uh, the ecosystem for non-governmental think tanks is very important. These think tanks have been playing very important and flexible roles uh, because of their diversities in fundraising and uh, subjects of research. Uh, and in, and also, of course, in making their own voices. And I personally think that we have been discussing about uh, this ecosystem. And, but I think this eco ecosystem is a system that we together uh, build. So for think tanks, we need to build this ecosystem. Uh, so however you raise your funds, whatever um, talent you bring in, and uh, wh wh whatever output you have, we need to work together as a team. For example, uh, CCG focused on public policy. Uh, we are like the um, uh, heroes behind uh, the, uh, the stage. Uh, we participate, we engage, uh, but we do not take credit. So here for public service and for um, uh, just the intelligence market, we're all making our own contribution. So Madam Mao, uh, shall we give her uh, some minutes to give us share with us something? Thank you, Dr. Wen, for having me again. And I think that, you know, I'm really very delighted. Uh, thank you. Um, your, your very insightful views and thoughts. And I think that I would just like to have a few words to wrap up the session. I think that, you know, there are a lot of common grounds amongst the different think tanks here. And uh, first of all, you know, we all agree the Internet of Things, and especially now under COVID, you know, um, going virtual and online is so important. You know, last year when we when I was in Beijing, you know, we never thought that we would reach out to 1.6 million online audience. And this is what, you know, um, the upside of COVID, you know, let me put it this way, you know, have brought to us, you know, we have over 1.6 million virtual audience, plus a lot of, you know, hundreds of in-person audience here in Beijing, you know. And also, you know, all the experts here, Lao uh, Shudu, Jiang Guo, we all use big data analysis now to help with our evidence-based research, you know, which is very important because then we it ensures, you know, our independent thinking. And we are not just a think tank, you know, like at our Hong Kong Foundation, we always strive to be a think and do tank which means that we do want to implement the recommendations we made, you know, not just to have very nicely printed research reports to be placed on bookshelves and collect dust. And I think that, you know, we all see that, you know, the need um, to share tell, um, to reach out not only the local thing chance to come for solidarity, but also international and mainland outreach, you know, so that we create this, like Dr. Henry Wan said, you know, this think tank ecosystem, you know, that we all help each other, you know, whether we have like common uh, research on aging population, on healthcare, you know, especially post-COVID recovery, and also education, you know, in grooming talent for the future, which is all very important. So that's all I have to say today. Thank you very much for having me. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moore from uh, Hong Kong. Uh, so with that, we conclude this session. Thank you. Thank you, all the panelists.